This tutorial focuses on modeling countrywide forest canopy height using JDI level 2A canopy height data, planet NICFI, base map, and a random forest model. So what is a JDI? Uh, JDI is the Global Ecosystem Dynamics Investigation LIDAR instrument uh, that is on board in the International Space Station. It uh, provides uh, JDI level 2A uh, data that includes metrics uh, such as uh, the relative height. So the relative height uh, represents the height uh, below which uh, uh, the energy from JEDA is uh, retained uh, to measure uh, height uh, relative to the ground. And uh, the planet uh, NICFI uh, data set uh, provides high resolution uh, satellite imagery uh, which is used for monitoring a uh, uh, tropical forest. So this uh, data set has been around since uh, 2020. Uh, the uh, imagery is uh, available uh, through a collaboration uh, that involves uh, NOAA's International Climate and Forest Initiative, NICFI, uh, Planet Labs, KSAT, and uh, Airbus. So this uh, data set is uh, available in uh, Google Earth Engine. Uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, access it, but uh, first you have to be registered. So I'm going to leave... Uh, uh, the, the details are uh, in the description below so that you can register to access the data set. So let's go into the code. So first of all, we are going to define uh, the area of interest. So in this case, you are going to use uh, the global uh, data set of, uh, of country boundaries uh, in order to uh, filter to our country of interest. So uh, in this case, we are going to uh, use uh, uh, Zimbabwe uh, for the demonstration purposes but you can select any country that you want and then next uh, I'm going to, uh, to load uh, the uh, planet uh, NICFI uh, data set uh, from the Africa base map so remember this is an image collection and uh, <coughs> I'm going to filter uh, to the following dates uh, uh, between uh, March and uh, May 2023 so this uh, corresponds uh, to the peak vegetation uh, uh, in the uh, in, in Zimbabwe in the project site, right? And then we clip to the country boundary, and then next I'm going to compute uh, uh, the normalized different vegetation index, and uh, so that we can uh, uh, get an idea of uh, the vegetation health uh, uh, in the uh, area of interest. And then next we are going to uh, create a composite that consists of uh, the imagery here and uh, the NDVI. And then uh, following that we are going to display uh, both uh, the uh, image, the planet uh, NICFI image and uh, the NDVI image. So next uh, we want now to load the JDA level 2A dataset. So first of all, we are going to define the masks that we are going to use for filtering the data. So here we are going to uh, define uh, two, uh, two masks. So first is the quality mask. So the quality mask uh, compose, uh, comprises uh, uh, the quality flag and uh, the grade flag. And then next we, we derive slope from the SRTM dataset. So here we are going to define uh, that uh, we want uh, slope areas uh, uh, with uh, we want to get slope with uh, 20 with less than 20 degrees so this is important uh, because uh, uh, the JEDA usually does not uh, get uh, very good uh, accuracy in uh, slopes above uh, 20 degrees right uh, and then for the uh, next uh, function we are going to uh, create this uh, processed JDI data function and here now it's going to take the functions uh, that we've created uh, previously. So first we will define the date and then please take note here I have defined the date from 2022 to 2023 so this is a, a quite a long period so I just want to get as many points as uh, possible and again uh, take note of the cutoff date it's in uh, March 2023 so this is when I, uh, the JEDI uh, 
uh, since I was uh, retired from the International Space Station. Uh, please take note that uh, it has been uh, reinstalled back in uh, from September 2024. So we should be having some data available. And then after that, uh, we load in the JDA level uh, 2A data set uh, here, and then we define our start and end date. And then uh, the we filter according to the boundary. So this is uh, the country boundary. And then we also filter according to the quality mask that we've defined previously, and uh, the slope mask also that we've uh, defined uh, previously. And then we are going to select uh, uh, the metric of interest here. So we are going to select RH98. This is the relative uh, height 98. Again, as I said, uh, it uh, represents uh, the height uh, below which 98% uh, of the energy is uh, retained uh, to measure uh, height uh, relative to the ground. So next uh, we are going to uh, create a a palette uh, to display the points uh, so you have specified it uh, to to be between uh, 5 and uh, 40 meters uh, following that we are going to uh, sample uh, points from the jedi mosaic so remember here the one that we are displaying is a jedi mosaic so the mosaic is uh, in raster format so what we want are the points uh, uh, that we are going to use uh, uh, for the middle, for for our modeling uh, uh, purposes, right? So here we use uh, the sample method uh, to extract the points, and we are extracting the points uh, within the the boundary, the country boundary, and I've defined uh, here the scale as 150. So this is quite a cost scale. So please take note: uh, the scale here is actually the spatial resolution. Okay, so this is spatial resolution, which is 150 meters. So it controls uh, the sampling density. So that means uh, the sampling of the points uh, that we want to use. Right, uh, please take note here that uh, uh, the cost uh, resolution is uh, uh, good because uh, uh, it, is, uh, it's, uh, it is efficient in terms of uh, the computer resources. Okay, this is not uh, computationally expensive. Whereas if we define it a finer resolution, uh, for example, 20, 50 meters, uh, we are going to get a uh, high accuracy uh, in terms of the, the points, but uh, it is quite uh, computationally expensive. And uh, sometimes you run into errors, uh, such as the, the uh, computation uh, run out time. Uh, it is because uh, the resolution is too fine okay so so there's a, a trade-off here uh, between uh, the this the, the spatial resolution and uh, the accuracy that you're aiming at but since we are demonstrating uh, for the modeling forest canopy height at a countrywide scale so I think a 150 uh, meter spatial resolution is, should be fine right uh, and uh, for the geometry here, I've uh, uh, specified as true, uh, so that uh, we get coordinates of uh, the sampled points. So next, uh, we want uh, to uh, filter the points according to our specific uh, uh, land cover classes that we are targeting. So we are going to use uh, the SL land cover uh, data set uh, to mask uh, uh, only the tree cover and shrubland. So we want uh, uh, to model uh, canopy height uh, specifically for the tree cover, which is actually the forest area and the shrubland. Right, so here our mask is going to take in uh, uh, the tree cover, which is uh, uh, 10 here, and then the shrubland, which is the class uh, 20. Right. Uh, once we define our mask, we we use uh, the reduce uh, year function, and then we filter uh, the, the points uh, according uh, to the tree cover and uh, shrubland. And also, we also want to get uh, to make sure that we get uh, the relative height uh, above five meters. So that's why I put five here. 
right next we are going to display uh, these uh, uh, filtered points uh, then uh, if you want you can export them to uh, the Google asset or Google Drive for for my case I'm exporting these points because I want to use it uh, later for other purposes right uh, following that we are going to split uh, these uh, extracted points uh, into training and uh, test data set so 70% uh, is going to be used for training and the test uh, and, and then 30% is going to be used for testing right uh, I've also limited uh, uh, this uh, the testing sample to 5,000 uh, uh, points uh, uh, please take note that I've done this uh, because uh, if it's more than 5,000 we are going to have uh, errors in uh, Earth Engine because uh, if the points are, are over 5,000. It is uh, d difficult to compute the uh, accuracy metrics such as uh, RMSE uh, and uh, R squared. So this is a, a limitation that I'm imposing on the model. Right, and then uh, following that, we are going to define the response and predictor variables. So for the predictors, we are going to use uh, the, the blue band, green band, red band, and uh, near infrared band, uh, as well as the NDVI. And for the response variable here, uh, we are going to use the, the relative uh, height 98. So this is our target variable. Right next, uh, we create a function uh, that we are going to use uh, for the modeling purposes. Uh, so here we are just uh, defining the scale, uh, which is at 100 uh, meter spatial resolution. And then we will, we will take uh, the uh, the training sample data. Okay, Tra this is training sample data. We define uh, our response variable. And then we, we are going to use this uh, sampled now uh, data set uh, in order to do our, to perform the the model okay so to perform to, form, to perform the random forest uh, regression modeling right uh, here the this uh, function is going to uh, uh, take in the sample data okay for so the training sample and then uh, we have our response variable which is uh, remember uh, the relative uh, uh, height 98 and then the predictor variables uh, we have a uh, uh, the planet bands and uh, NDVI, right? And then we need to specify that this is a regression uh, a model, okay, since we are predicting a, a canopy height, right? Uh, next, uh, uh, we also uh, specify the the validation. Okay, so here for the validation, we are taking just say uh, the test sample okay test sample data the 30 percent that uh, we used we reserved uh, uh, for checking the accuracy of the model and then uh, we specify the metrics that we want to 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 calculate and here we have got a uh, rmse and uh, the r squared so these are the metrics that we are going to use uh, to check the model performance and then uh, finally, we are just uh, going to uh, uh, predict uh, the final model and uh, display it. We also want to display the legend. So creating a legend is a bit of a hassle in uh, uh, Earth Engine. Uh, so here, this is uh, the code showing how we, pre we prepare the uh, legend. So we get in a palette. So we are getting our palette from this uh, package. And then... Uh, we also need to define the lower and upper limit of the data set. So the code is going to get in the minimum regression from uh, the predicted uh, canopy height. And then it's also going to get uh, the maximum uh, prediction from the canopy height prediction. And uh, take note that uh, the scale is uh, the 100 uh, as well. So this is a quite coarse. Uh, but because we are uh, modeling at a countrywide uh, level, then I think this is uh, uh, it's okay uh, to have uh, this scale. So let's just run uh, the uh, code and uh, 
see the result right okay uh, while the model is running uh, we can uh, check the rest of the code okay so we are already getting uh, the results right uh, so the for the rest of the code finally I would want to export uh, this uh, uh, final uh, predicted uh, canop height map to Google asset uh, because this is quite a a heavy map uh, it is a slight meter uh, a resolution so remember this is for the whole country so downloading into Google Drive will take uh, a lot of time and uh, the image is going to be split into many parts so I will just keep it in, uh, in my asset and I will retrieve it whenever I, I want it Right, uh, here we've got uh, the results. So for the for the RMSE, we have uh, four, which is uh, quite uh, good. So four meters, uh, the error. And the R squared here is uh, 25, uh, 0 0.25. So please take note here that uh, I've limited the points one to about uh, 5,000. Okay, so it's not taking all the points. And uh, if you want also to increase uh, the R squared again, you can uh, also use a smaller uh, area of interest or boundary so that you 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 sample at a finer resolution. Right? Let's say I check uh, the final map. So this is our final uh, map, our final predicted uh, canopy height map. Uh, I'm just going to uncheck uh, some of the layers so that you can see clearly right so all, the, all these areas uh, show the canopy height uh, for the the forest areas okay and uh, the shrubland areas so may maybe shrubland is mixed up with uh, some grassland so remember the base okay the masking uh, land cover base map was from uh, ESA so maybe accuracy may not be that high but uh, basically this is uh, the final result so if we check for example in uh, one forest area uh, the Mafungawus forest reserve area uh, this shows uh, the forest uh, cover height the forest canopy height sorry for this uh, forest reserve area so this is an indigenous forest reserve area so it's called uh, the uh, miombo woodlands okay miombo woodlands and uh, we can see uh, the distribution of our height here and uh, this is around uh, uh, 17 uh, meters 15 to 17 meters okay and uh, if we we go to the eastern part of the country where we have uh, the commercial plantation areas we can see that we've got uh, very uh, tall trees in this region so this is the eastern islands of uh, Zimbabwe so we have a lot of uh, uh, commercial plantation uh, trees okay so these uh, trees here they've got height maybe above uh, 40 so this is your uh, wattle trees and uh, we have some uh, gum trees uh, that are used uh, for furniture manufacturing and other industrial uses. Right, so this is the final map. Okay, and uh, you can use uh, this code uh, for your uh, uh, country of interest or uh, another boundary. Okay, as long as you change here uh, the specification uh, that's all about uh, uh, today's uh, video uh, thank you very much for watching i uh, see you in the next one